we are doing something different today. Bioshock Infinite is one of the FPS games ever made and features a lot of shooting, slashing, bashing, flying and maging. Since I've never personally played this game before, I figured I'd give it a shot. First, there are a few basics we need to set straight. In this game, there's a lot of garbage to clean out and there's a lot of ways to go about it. Some of my favorites include, but are not limited to, the machine gun, the hand cannon, Wingardium Leviosa, the Fist of God, and my personal favorite, no, you. Before all that, let's talk about the story. <laughs> Luckily, the story of Bioshock is very easy, so it doesn't require any additional explanation. We start the game as Booker Shock the Wit, a private investigator looking for a girl to quite literally kidnap in order to free himself from his gambling debt. First I need to get to Colombia to find the girl, so I enter the patented Space Elevator 9000. After getting a quick tour around the block, it's time to get to work. I baptize you in the name of our prophet, in the name of our founders, and the name of our lord. So anyways, I'm trying to find a giant angel tower where this girl called Elizabeth is supposedly locked up. If I am successful in breaking her out, the only thing I need to do is return her to New York and everything will be Telegram, Mr. DeWitt. Huh. Telegram for you, sir. DeWitt, stop. Do not alert Comstock to your presence, stop. Whatever you do, do now pick number 77. Hmm, that's weird. Well, let's play a game before heading off to the tower. That's definitely not going to have any consequences in the future. Silly, there's never a charge for the raffle. Even sleeping under a rock? Oh, number 77, that must be a lucky number. Number 77! Hey, it seems like I won, what's the price? The price is racism. At first I was kind of taken aback, until I saw the button of justice. Now, where'd you get that brand, boy? Don't you know that makes you the backstabbing stick in the grass, false shepherd? And we ain't letting no false shepherd into our flocks! Show him what we got to play, boys! From this point on, I think it's safe to assume that stealth is no longer an option. So, after culling our way through multiple waves of enemies and acquiring an adequately spicy drink, we continue our way forward. Now, we finally found a blimp to take us to the big statue thing, but then Comstock decides it's a good idea to blow it up with me on it. So now we finally arrived at the tower and we can see some questionable footage. After we finally see her in person, we immediately notice that she's not exactly normal. So the plan is simple. We drop in, get her out, and then get her out of this tower. Nothing. You serve zero purpose. You should kill yourself now and give somebody else a piece of that oxygen and ozone layer. Right after that uh, interesting moment, it's made clear that we have to run from Big Bird for the rest of the playthrough. Well, I'm gonna list off a few things that happened because it's a lot and there's only so much time in the day, so... We escape from KFC DoorDash but fall into the ocean, then we wake up but Elizabeth isn't there so we go look for her. And she is busting it down at the beach club. Yo, 
we convince her to leave with us to Paris, but we were lying because we were taking her to New York, so she gets mad and chaos us by ranch. We get discovered by rebels who want Father Comstock gone, but they need weapons, so they ask us to go look for weapons. If we do that for them, we will get an airship to finally get out of this mess. After making peace with Elizabeth, we head towards the gunsmith. However, things aren't that easy and the gunsmith was already dead before we got there. Now this is where things get slightly more complicated because we warp into another dimension where the gunsmith is not dead. But in this dimension, we have to retrieve the stuff to actually make the guns because they have been taken away by Comstock's men. Also, in this dimension, since we are viewed as rebels, there is a lot more enemies. So we're gonna have to commit some extra violence. When we finally arrive at the storage room, where the parts are stored, we see the parts are too big to take with us. So we warp into yet another dimension. In this dimension, the parts are already at the gunsmith. But at this point, that's the least of my concerns. See, this dimension is the violent dimension. The rebels have risen to power and are now actively destroying everything that has to do with Comstock. Also, the Booker DeWitt from this dimension has died at the side of the rebels. So that makes us an enemy to the rebels in this dimension. TLDR, everybody wants to be my enemy. So after finally dispatching all the enemies, we finally get access to an airship, where we almost immediately get greeted by an old friend. What do you hear? It looks like to worship me? Kill yourself! I mean that with a hundred percent, with a thousand percent. So we escape from Songbird to go on another game spree until we finally almost reach Comstock, so we can dispatch him and escape to New York. So, since we were launched away, Elizabeth has been captured. We have to get her free again, so we fight our way through hordes and hordes of enemies once again. And finally, after battling for a long time, we get to see Elizabeth. Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck? Old Elizabeth gives us advice on how to prevent what we are seeing before us, which is literally New York burning in the Nine Hells. When we return to our timeline, which is the third dimension, we free Elizabeth and continue to make our way towards Comstock. And we actually find him this time. However, um, after some persuading from Booker, we also now have to deal with the rebels all on our own, since we don't have the artillery of Comstock anymore. So this all culminates into the final fight, where we actually seize control over the bird. Finally, all of the troops have been dealt with. Now all that remains for the story to finally come to its conclusion is for Elizabeth to destroy the very tower which held her captive during all this time. I would have said if it was that simple, because at this point we discover Elizabeth is a literal god. The tower was the only thing holding her powers back, 
and now she has full control over time, space and everything in between. So in order to reveal the final truth of this game, Elizabeth sends us to a demi-plane in between time itself, where we discover that all possibilities have already happened multiple times. At the very end, we also discover that it was not Elizabeth, but us who is responsible for the time changes. See, we, Booker the Wit, is actually Comstock, but he only becomes Comstock after being baptized in the river. So that's why, if Booker dies during the baptism, Comstock will never have been born. And that's why we must die.